Awesome. Perfect. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Welcome to the uh, Vacaville Fire Department Community Town Hall. I am Chris Concepcion, uh, Vacaville Fire Department's Fire Chief, and I'm joined um, this afternoon um, with folks from AP Triton, uh, Kevin Taylor, um, and Melissa Vesco uh, Swank. Um, they are uh, AP Triton is the uh, is the folks that are helping us with our standards of cover and our community um, risk assessment um, study that they're conducting right now. So um, the meeting this afternoon, um, we're gonna talk about, uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, what uh, your fire department does for you and, and kind of what we're all about. Uh, then I will hand it over to uh, Kevin and Melissa and we will talk about um, what the CRA SOC project actually is. Um, and then they'll introduce you to the uh, survey that we're going to put out that'll be available for a couple of weeks. And after that, then uh, we'll be open for some questions if, um, if you have any, and um, that will be it. So let's go ahead and move to the next slide. So just a quick fire department uh, overview. Uh, the Vacaville Fire Department has been around and has provided services to the city of Vacaville and surrounding areas since 1895. Um, and uh, we provide provided ambulance services um, since uh, in, in the in the 70s. And um, the fire department really is kind of a misnomer because we provide all risk emergency response to the city of Vacaville. And we do that right now from five different fire, uh, fire stations uh, spread throughout the city. And we are opening a sixth station um, expected to open in Lagoon Valley in October of this year. Right now, we've got 111 personnel, 98 of them are sworn or they are our firefighters. And then we have 13 folks that work in our fire prevention, code enforcement and admin. Uh, when the Lagoon Valley station opens up, that'll increase to 120 personnel. We're going to add nine uh, more personnel to our ranks uh, to staff uh, Lagoon Valley. Our minimum daily staffing right now is 26 folks on duty, five people per station, um, along with the battalion chief. Uh, and uh, when Lagoon Valley uh, opens up in October, uh, we'll have 29 people on duty every day. Last year, we responded to a little over 13,000 incidents um, that has, uh, has grown about 19% over the last uh, uh, five years. Um, about 74% of our calls are medical uh, emergencies. And um, we have, uh, we are the only public agency uh, emergency medical transport in uh, in Solano County, so that means we have ambulance. We have an ambulance or a medic unit at each one of our current stations, and those uh, five ambulances are staffed with what we call dual role uh, emergency medical technicians and paramedics that are also trained as firefighters. So not only can they provide emergency medical services. Um, but in the case that we get a fire or some other emergency, they can respond to that also, and they and they can fight fire. And, and the and the ambulances are equipped with some of some of that stuff, so they they can um, effectively fight fire. L last year, uh, we transported about eighty one hundred uh, patients. And as I previously mentioned, uh, the. Fire department really is kind of a misnomer anymore. Originally, back in 1895, that's all the fire department responded to was fires. Although we still respond to fires, um, that is um, that is a very small part of what we do anymore. Um, as I mentioned, about 74% of our calls are EMS and nature, emergency medical services, but we also do technical rescue. Hazmat response, hazardous, you know, hazardous fuels mitigation, wildland firefighting. Uh, and then we have a, a pretty robust uh, prevention uh, program. We do new construction reviews, permitting, site inspections. Um, our firefighters, as well as our fire prevention folks, will do annual um, in fire inspections to, to make sure that the community is safe. 
Um, and then uh, the, the Baghmole Fire Department is a little unusual in that code we have oversight of our code enforcement too, and they are primarily responsible for um, weed abatement. So they go out for, right now is weed abatement season. Everyone, uh, they're out doing inspections of the properties to make sure everyone's uh, weeds are, uh, are cleared uh, to make sure that, um, that uh, Baghmole remains fire safe. We also do a lot of uh, public outreach and public education. Uh, we try to make as many community events as possible, as well as con uh, public outreach. So you can see all the different things um, that we do. We do quite a bit for for the community with our 111 folks that we have on staff, soon to be 120. And so that's a little bit of an overview um, for uh, of the of the Bagwell Fire Department. If you have any further questions. Um, we'll, we'll wait until the end of the, the presentation. So, and I think I'll kick it over to uh, Kevin Taylor, who's going to talk about the, the project. Thanks very much, Chief, and uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for attending tonight. As the Chief mentioned, our firm is conducting a comprehensive community risk assessment and standards to cover deployment analysis for the fire department. The end result of this study is recommendations for optimum staffing, deployment of firefighting and EMS resources, and for an appropriate level of service. The study consists of the five sections shown on the slide that Melissa is displaying right now, project initiation, evaluation of current conditions, community risk assessment, future delivery system models, and development review and delivery of the plan. Tonight, we're conducting the community town hall meeting and kicking off the community survey. The standard to cover is an evaluation that's an objective-based FAVE study beginning with a community risk assessment and then an analysis and report consistent with state and national best practices. The study follows the methodologies and recommendations from the Center for the Public Safety Excellence. This report includes an analysis of historical performance, community risk factors, expectations, evaluation of existing and projected risks, hazards, population growth and aging, topography, population density, and proposed development strategies and deployment strategies in the city. We hope that the report will be a key component of the fire department's planning efforts as it moves forward with its future in performance goal setting and resource allocations. It should enable the department to define the appropriate level of service and determine if that level of service aligns with generally acceptable national standards and benchmarks. Tonight, we're asking for your input in the survey to help us with the report. And I'll kick it over to Melissa, who will walk us through the community survey. Thank you, Kevin and Chief. Thank you for the introduction. I am Melissa Vasquez-Swank. I am AP Triton's um, Director of Project Operations, and I also have the pleasure of developing the bulk of our community surveys as well as internal surveys. Um, and I've done this for quite some time. This is actually one of my favorite components of the CRA SOC, as well as strategic planning, because it brings the community, of which I am also, into the process of our projects. Um, I would, I commend the, the department for including the public. It's a key part of the standards for CRA SOC. Um, so I'm going to introduce the survey what we're really looking for here is what services are important to you, the community, what you'd like to see your department plan for, key expectations, things that you've noted that are very positive that the, the department is doing already, things that might be concerning or even confusing. Um, as the chief mentioned, there's a lot of services that you may not have even known that the, the department offered or was uh, responsible for. So those are things that could be noted in the survey. And also there's plenty of room for other thoughts or things that we may not have covered in our questions. The survey is really broken down into several different types of um, questions. It's really important that we ask a variety of questions because people's brains work differently and we like to meet each person where they're at 
people ask questions that are rating questions, ranking. Um, in SurveyMonkey, it's a drag and drop if it's a, a ranking question. So you can easily just move your priorities up and down and um, have it make sense for you. There's checkbox questions. So you can select as many communication methods as you like. Planning considerations are really important because it directs the future of the department. Um, another key area that we look at is the level of satisfaction with services. If you've been served by the department, whether or not it was an emergency or uh, contact at a community event, we'd like to know what your level of satisfaction is with uh, the services you've received. And also response time opinions. Um, on response time, I think it's important to note that there's a variety of things that happen that go into response time before the department ever receives your call. Uh, there's the, the 911 call answering time, a transfer time, the turnout time, which is the time that it takes the de department to receive the call and then begin to travel to an incident. Um, so we ask you to consider those steps before making your response for um, response time expectations. Then we'll also look at several open-ended topics. We wanna look at tier response time, and this kind of plays into um, what I was speaking about before about response time opinions, because uh, I don't know, I can't think of a non-emergency call at this moment, but non-emergency versus a life-threatening event are two very different calls. Um, so we'll ask what your opinions are on tiered response times. We also wanna know what safety concerns are important to you so that the department can tailor their efforts to, in that area. How you'd like to see public education look? Which ways do you receive information? Do you think that the current efforts are accessible and meeting the community needs? What what areas would you like to see improved? Which areas are, is your department already doing well? Um, so take as much time as you need on those questions. They're there for, for your good. Um, again, I would commend the department for being inclusive and transparent with the community in this process. Um, it really leads to a more thorough evaluation and better recommendations for the future of the department and ultimately the service that you receive. So it's a short survey, but again, you can take as long as you need. It only takes about 10 minutes to complete all of the questions, but you know, be thorough in your responses. I re read every one of them and I make sure that the, the details are passed on to our team and your chief. The survey is completely confidential. Um, we won't know who it is unless you give me that information or, or would like some follow-up. I will create an executive summary of the survey um, with key responses and trends. I'll look at areas that should be incorporated into the recommendations we make, and then that will be included with the final CRA SOC. We'll keep the survey open for about two weeks. We'll stay open until Friday, July 12th at 5 p.m., and then we'll close it. You can access the survey via SurveyMonkey. The link is there. It's rather long. Um, or you can scan the QR code. This information will also be available in the chat. And I think Tiffany's already done that. And um, it will be available by QR code from here until close. Are there any questions? I'd ask that they pertain to the study at hand or the survey rather than the department in general. There's a lot of areas that um, your, your questions or concerns can be placed into the survey. And if you'd like some follow-up, we can do that as well. And I don't know if everybody can just unmute or if we should do hands. Does anyone have any questions at all? Hello. Oh, there's one. Hi there. 
Go ahead. Hello, sorry. I just had one question. Um, I have been, I'm fairly new to Vacaville and to the California area. Um, and so I am very happy that you guys are launching this study um, because there are have been an increase in things in the in the area, emergencies and fires. Um, so I'm I'm very happy that you're doing it. I just wondered, was there anything that triggered the need to do the study now? Um, has it just come up? This is just our time to do it, or was there something specific of concern that you were looking for? You need more information on. Um, I was just wondering if there was anything that that sparked the need for it. That's a great question, and uh, no, there wasn't any uh, pre precipitating event or anything like that that uh, is causing the need for a survey. It's always just uh, prudent for uh, fire departments every now and then to take a look to uh, to see what uh, how our community looks and and do a, a community risk assessment, and then the standards of, uh, the standards of cover part is. The question that it asked is: Is um, are our resources deployed uh, optimally, or are they located uh, and um, and deployed optimally so that uh, we can meet the response times that we have? So, um, it we you know we we need to take a look at that every now and then. The last time we did it was in um, in 2018. Um, that was presented to the council at that point. Um, much has changed in, um, in, in Vacaville since then and continues to change with uh, biotech coming in and more development coming in. So it's always prudent to take a look at that just to make sure that uh, we're keeping up with the community needs. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. I would add that the CRA SSC is foundational to any fire department and they're only good for about five years. So in five years, Vacaville should also be doing this again. Uh, good evening, Chief, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can, go ahead. Um, I do have a couple of questions. It sounds like uh, the questions are, like Melissa said, more tailored towards this, uh, the survey and so forth. Can we reach out to you uh, afterwards or send you an email with questions regarding staffing, response times, and things of that nature um, outside of this meeting, I guess, if it's, the questions won't be answered now? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. You okay. can hear email. my email is on the, on the website, or I can give you my, my, my phone number. I can give it to you now. It's 707-449-5462. Uh, Thank you. I appreciate that, Chief. Not going to answer any questions. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? Last chance. Oh, I I was going to ask a question. I'm sorry. This is Rita. Okay. Go ahead. Um, Rita. I haven't had much experience uh, with any of the fire department, their responses or any of the activities they do. So how valuable are my answers going to be to this survey? Uh, and I can't really tell you whether I think the response to uh, not knowing the questions. I, this, it may be, uh, I may be uh, overthinking this. So oh. I just wanted to kind of reach out. I'll respond. Rita, okay. I still would love to see, hear what your expectations are. Um, it's great that you haven't had to use the fire department services, but you're still a vital community member and your opinion is also valuable. Um, you can skip any questions. You don't have to answer them all. So, you know, just as much or little as you have to offer, we're, we're happy to have it. Yes, definitely. Uh, I echo Melissa's uh, comments on that. We definitely want your input and, uh, you know, we, it's important to us to know um, what the community's expectations are of us, um, regardless of whether you've had any interaction with us or any experiences with us before. While we're waiting for questions, I also would recommend um, sharing the survey link if you have neighbors or friends that 
are unaware that it's out, go ahead and share it, text it to them, um, share the QR code. We really want as many responses as possible to give, you know, a more statistically valid survey. Regardless, the qualitative information is um, hugely helpful. Hearing and seeing no questions. Okay, if there are no questions, I what I did um, is in the chat, I put my uh, email address. I didn't want to say it oh, um, verbally because I, I have a funny way of spelling my name. So, <laughs> um, so it's there and available. I didn't want it to go to the wrong address. So I put both my my email address there. Uh, you can just copy and paste it if you have any questions. And then my um, my office number is a reminder, 707. And that's also in the chat, 707-449-5462. If you have any additional questions, please uh, reach out. I'd be happy to, to have a conversation with you or, or try to answer your questions. I will also add my information into the chat in case there's any survey questions or um, anything about the study that comes up, feel free to reach out. Okay, hey, I'm getting one last chance. No, if a couple of folks, if you have any questions, if not, Thank you very much for, I know everyone's busy uh, taking time out of your schedule to um, to attend uh, this town hall meeting today. And um, please, as Melissa said, spread the word about the survey. We really value everyone's input. This this study uh, is important to, to, you know, to the, the fire department and how, you know, we, we do things in the future. Um, so, um, we really want to hear what you have to say, what your expectations are. So thank you very much. Appreciate everyone's time. Have a wonderful evening. All right. Thank, thank you, you guys. Thank you, everyone.